Hey guys, this is KSB with Tape, and today you join me at Cape Canaveral Launch Facility in Florida. This is Rescaled Solar System, or Real Solar System, and this is episode one of, well, Real Solar System. I think I'm just going to name the series Real Solar System. Originally it was going to be like a Project Duna type thing, but I want to do kind of more things than just Duna, although I am going to be quite heavily focusing on Duna, um, because it's, you know, close by, and kind of makes sense, because, you know, in the Mars kind of idea. But anyway, uh, we start off with this little, um, this little kind of one-stage rocket. It's got a press, a press map barometer on it. Um, I'm just gonna basically see where the atmosphere ends because in testing for this, um, I, uh, I kind of couldn't find where the atmosphere. Well, well, no, I started orbiting at about 120 kilometers, and I was getting a little bit of drag, so that wasn't great to stay in orbit. Um, I'm basically using the realism overhaul mods, like, uh, kind of some of them but not all of them, and you know, just basically as real as possible, because in the Project Moon series, the Rescale Kerbin Project Moon, um, my problem was that uh, it was really hard to actually get to orbit, um, because the Kerbal's uh, empty tanks are way heavier than they should be, so now I've got the, uh, the mod so it's way more realistic. But anyway, um, we we're at 150 kilometers, and the uh, the barometer's saying there's no atmosphere here, but far is saying there's kind of various bits of drag and things, and we can only get physical time accelerate instead of uh, like normal time accelerate. So I'm assuming the atmosphere is still around here. Um, so uh, I'll probably need to go a little higher, but my FWAPS is coming up, so I should probably reignite that engine. Um, yeah, I am using the Kerbin Beautifier mod, uh, but it's a little glitchy with this. Uh, and especially because the city lights are in the ocean, I'll definitely be getting rid of the city lights because, I mean, unless Kerbals actually live in the ocean, and that's why I never, never see any of the cities. But uh, I'm assuming it's just because the lights aren't mapped for this. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll just boost up a little more and find where the atmosphere actually ends. It'll probably be uh, fairly obvious when I run out of physical time accelerate uh, and get normal time accelerate. Um, that will be fairly soon, actually. Uh, yeah, there you go. 180 kilometers is where the atmosphere fully ends on this, so I'm going to be aiming for orbits above 180 kilometers, so it's a little safer than, you know, dying. Um, and the flight data says all the drag things are not a number or are zero, so it's, you know, pretty good. <clears throat> so we should probably uh, launch something to, uh, you know, well, launch something that won't burn up. Well, actually, first off, this needs to fall back to the atmosphere. And here it goes. Um, <coughs> yeah, I will be getting rid of the city lights because they're going to annoy me in the ocean. I will also be getting the ambient light plugin because I, I'm using all that, that in quite a lot of series and I understand that it's really annoying to watch a video where you can't see anything. Um, that's not installed right now because it just kind of slipped my mind. And you can see there's quite a lot of cloud glitching. Um, <coughs> that's a problem. I mean, some of the some of the Kerbin Beautifier stuff makes it look really good and some of it just kind of makes it look annoying because of all the glitching. So, kind of, y you guys can tell me whether you want it or not. I'm not going to keep the city lights because they're just not mapped for this properly. Um, but maybe the clouds, so you know. Uh, so yeah, the focus of this series is kind of mainly going to be Duna. I might go back to the moon because I want to do a pristine landing and it'll be quite a lot easier now I have realistic tanks. I didn't realize how unbalanced the uh, Kerbal stuff was. It it's obviously can't be... They obviously make it heavier in Kerbal Space Program to make it a little harder to get to orbit because, I mean, Kerbin's really small so it will be really easy with real tanks. But anyway, that smashes into the ocean and we should probably move on. Again, at Cape Canaveral. Um, this is my uh, Triton 1 launch vehicle. Um, I call basically all of my <laughs> launch vehicles Triton. I need to come up with some new names for launch vehicles. Um, yeah, you can see the city lights there are in the, uh, in the dark. Um, yeah, so let's go. Uh, this will be sped up in a second, four times time accelerate, because it's just another launch, and launches in the real world take about, uh, uh like 12-ish minutes. But anyway, we're going now, and, uh, yeah, it, this was so much easier to build than, um, in the old, in, in the game with, uh, really heavy fuel tanks, um, it's kind of like having cast iron fuel tanks with the normal Kerbal Space Program, but uh, basically I just built this by, these are all stretchy tanks, and the textures look quite nice now, but basically I built the payload, and then I built the second stage, and used MechJet to tell me the Delta V um, 
uh, what kind of delta V it was getting and just basically built it to work and it's pretty good this is simply just kind of a one ton lifter and it's using 2.5 meter parts um, I think it's using very few stock parts on the launch vehicle uh, none except that SAS unit because I, I you can use stock parts but you know I tend not to for this um, but the payload is stock so you know I want to kind of well yeah, this is gonna be le less kind of about trying to I'm just gonna basically use the parts that'll make it best for, maybe make it best and most feasible. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm also using a kind of a weird mod, uh, not a weird mod, like a logical mod. It's called uh, engine engine igniter. How did I screw up those words? Engine igniter. Um, it basically means you can only light up your engines uh, so many times um, without extra fluid or extra fuses or whatever you need um, fuses. But y yeah. Um, so it's n it's not really working right now. I think maybe you need special engines for it, like new special parts or something, or maybe just I I'll see if I can get it working because it is quite interesting and will make it a little bit more difficult. But um, I'm not too bothered if it doesn't work. But anyway, we're coming up to orbital velocity quite quickly now. Uh, it tends to be around 74 to 7800 meters a second. I'm not entirely sure of the exact figure. Um, yeah, there we go. We're getting quite close now on our periaps is rising and I've really throttled back the engine because uh, our apoaps is really moving away from us and we don't want it to be too uncircular but we have quite a bit of fuel left over um, just a side note the fuel quantities you can see those are in liters not standard Kerbal units that's why uh, tanks will appear to have a lot more fuel than you think they do um, but yeah that's uh, we're just going to circularize our orbit um, oh no yeah burn the other way 210 kilometers Oh no, then I uh, decouple to try and circularize it and it overdoes it. But I have RCS on this probe because I tend to put RCS on my satellites. Um, this satellite is actually, well I guess I could call it a communication satellite, but it's mainly for planning maneuvers um, to other planets because I'm not entirely sure where I need to be. Obviously I'll probably do most of it by Googling, but this will be quite a nice test, um, uh, quite a nice test subject. Uh, this um, this isn't an equatorial equatorial orbit because I launched from Florida, but there are lots of different launch launch facilities now, and you can use different launch facilities, which is really cool. So I'm going to be experimenting with that, and uh, you'll see in the next launch, which will be coming up fairly soon. Um, but I'm just going to make my orbit perfect, and we are back into one times time accelerate. That's why it's all going kind of slowly. But anyway, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, so I should probably get along with testing how much delta v I'll need to get to. Uh, Duna. So uh, I guess we just. You can see everything looks really inclined. I did do a rescaled Kerbin, uh, rescale, uh, the new rescaled solar system video um, recently, which you could probably check out. It's on my channel somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's looking really good, and they've just made it basically made it way more real realistic. Rather than just having a big Kerbin, they've got like it looking like the real world. They've got launch facilities. They've got everything kind of inclined. This looks way more inclined than it is. Basically, it's because um, Kerbin or Earth is now on its axis. It's actually tilted on its axis, so it makes the solar system look really inclined, which is um, pretty cool. So we actually have um, from this launch, we're almost exactly in the plane of Duna, which is pretty cool. Um, so Cape Canaveral may be a good place to launch from uh, when I'm going to Duna, and that's going to be kind of my main focus. But eventually, I'd like to send some probes to other places. I do want to actually put Kerbals on Duna. I want to be like, hey look, put Kerbals on Mars. Fucking fuck you, NASA. But I probably won't be using, like, tack light support. There will have probably been a blip there, basically. Um, I'd been watching a video whilst doing this and had forgotten to mute that little bit of the footage. So there was just Scott Man Lee talking on my video. Um, probably would have got it more views. Uh, but no, I, I tend to watch videos while doing things because I have a very short attention span. I, I like to do multiple things. But anyway, we need to rename this vessel to Orbital Planner Mark 1 because it will be for planning my orbits, I guess. But on to another launch. We are launching from India, actually, because that's on the equator and I'd quite like to see what I can do with an equatorial launch. And this is a slight, quite a bit bigger launch vehicle, actually. It's uh, using 3.75 meter parts. Yeah, you see we're launching from India. That looks really cool. I do like how the clouds look here and in the launch they look really nice. Um, this is launching a heavier satellite which can move itself quite around quite a lot in the orbit of Kerbin to do lots of different tests. Um, but yeah, this is 
well, I've called this Triton too, but I think it looks quite a lot like an Antares launch vehicle. Um, one of the private companies uh, called Orbital Sciences, uh, or Orbital Sciences? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Um, they make a vehicle called Antares. Um, they're also contracted by NASA for resupply. They're kind of like SpaceX, but they're not so revolutionary as SpaceX. They're just building um, private space, uh, private rockets. Yeah, and uh, there you go. That those clouds look really nice, actually. When I pass through them, I do quite like that. Um, but yeah, orbital sciences actually. They're just kind of well, obviously they're pretty revolutionary because a private space company at all is pretty damn uh, <laughs> is pretty damn unique. But. Uh, they're not trying to make reusable rockets and they're using like old Russian parts to make their rockets so it's kind of they're basically doing the same as everybody else does but a private company so they're not quite as cool as SpaceX but they are you know they're still a private space company but anyway again we're boosting into a fairly kind of probably going to be more like a 220 um, kilometer orbit and this is using a three engine cluster on this because it gives me a lot more efficiency uh, you can see the gla the clouds glitching out like hell there, but now they're kind of back. But they look a bit rubbish on rescale curving because of the textures have to be stretched. Um, so I mean, I'll you know tell me what you think about keeping them. Um, yeah, so we're just going to boost into orbit now, basically. Uh, this stage has quite a lot of delta v on it. Um, yeah, and the stage above that, not the stage, the actual probe has about thirty nine hundred meters a second delta v. And you can probably see those little canisters on the side. There's like these little things, just, uh, you can possibly see them. They're like little silvery canisters. They look kind of like radial ion canisters, but they're actually, they have hypergolic fluid in them. And that's for reigniting engines if I ever get the mod working. Um, but yeah, we're getting uh, again up to orbital velocity. This is again at four times time accelerating. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, pretty good. Um, I do quite like these rockets now, and before it was really hard to do rescale Kerbin Project Moon because I'd have to spend so much time working on the launch vehicles, but now it's easier because it's you know more realistic, so it's just like, build a launch vehicle. It takes a little more thought than stock KSP, but still, it's I, I, I quite like it. Um, but uh, yeah, we're in a pretty good orbit now, uh, just circularize it, and then we'll screw it up by decoupling. Yeah, you see, now we're in a... That uh, not circular orbit again, but it doesn't matter. We have we're going to be changing our orbit so much that it doesn't really matter. And this is called maneuver planet because I'll be able to change my orbit and see where's best to maneuver from. I'll extend the solar panels again back into one times time accelerate now because uh, because why not? And it does look quite nice um, moving above the surface of the Earth with all the clouds. Yeah, there's the hypergolic fluid canisters. And we've got some Rocker Max engines. Um, yeah, not brilliantly efficient, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. We have tons of fuel. Um, it says 18. That's you'll notice because that's usually a 360 unit tank, but now it's an 1800 liter tank because, uh, well, because um, the Kerbal units are something weird. I don't know. I think they're just arbitrary units. Um, but anyway, I guess we can start using this to plan. Um, you know, we usually have to leave from the dark side to move up to places like Mars because that's just kind of how it works. Because um, <coughs> you're going to be burning on the opposite side of the sun so that you leave and curb it, curb it's prograde. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, throw down a maneuver and just do the kind of similar thing. Um, obviously, this is, well, not obviously, but this is basically to find out what kind of inclination we are re relative to Juno from here. And it turns out to be about four degrees. So, I mean, this is in a way different orbit to that other craft, but we're in still not that far from the plane of Duna, even though we're in a completely different orbit. But, you know, it's it's probably best to find the absolute perfect place to burn from, because it's going to be... I'm not sure how big a maneuver it'll be to change my uh, um, inclination uh, around the sun. We'll find out. Um, but, yeah, this is... Uh, just uh, seeing how much delta v it'll take to change my inclination around Kerbin. But anyway, this uh, will be for the future episodes, and I'll be doing hopefully more interesting things in future episodes. I do hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Chaos Booth Tape. I will see you next time.